I'd like to introduce Howard to the stage, and Howard's going to introduce his panel as they talk about the, the leaders of the future. So please welcome Howard and his panel. Well, good, uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's my privilege to uh, chair the first panel of this morning. Uh, we've got, um, as ever, uh, an esteemed panel. Um, uh, starting, starting right at the end there, we've got uh, Adel Abdul Hadi. He's the CEO of Shield Security uh, Services Limited in the UK, and he established international electronic security in Dubai. And we also know him, of course, for his leadership of the Security Professionals Association under CIRA as well. So well-known character here for sure. Uh, then we come to uh, Dana Horbold. Uh, she is the Chief Information Security Officer of External at Help HG, which is a cyber security arm of the Ian Enterprise, formerly known as the Eti Salat Group. Uh, Paul Bruett is the Country Security Manager for SPM Oil and Gas, uh, which is a subsidiary of Caterpillar. He's been working in Iraq for the fir past 14 years, and he specializes in the security provision of the oil and gas industry. <clears throat> and uh, those uh, of you that are security astute will, re will, will see that the, that the man sitting on my left here doesn't match the picture on the screen. And that is because um, uh, Arif al-Janahi has, uh, has got food poisoning, unfortunately, uh, today, so he's unable to hear, so be here. So, uh, Khalid Al Hamadi, who is the head of regulation at CIRA, has very bravely uh, stepped in uh, to field uh, some uh, part of the questions that we've 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 got going today. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's crack on straight in then. The um, the title of this segment is how how the role of a security professional is changing, uh, and as ever with uh, the the uh, leaders in security, we'll do what it says on the tin. And uh, so we'll crack on with that exact um, question. So let's start with, uh, with you, Adol, at the end, if we can. How is the role of the security prof professional is changing? And given the time constraints, can I just ask you to highlight just one aspect of the most prominent change in your mind? Thank you. Well, the uh, security professionals, as uh, now forms an integral part of any organization uh, today, not like in the past, where security was related mainly to guarding, or the security guard, or the night watchman. In this area, they call it natur, and I think it's derived from uh, <coughs> the word night tour. Okay? Disregarding any other elements within the organizations, like profit, uh, contingency planning, business continuity management, and so on and so forth, and effective communication. And when we talk about communication, we talk about internal and external communications, which is for the security profession to build the security culture within the organization, okay, as well as sharing information with other organizations similar in their uh, activities. For example, you can protect your organization, okay, but what you are actually doing you're moving the criminals away from your organization, you are displacing them. So they're moving somewhere else. Okay? So you are not actually helping the society in order to achieve a safe and secure environment. So the idea of effective communication is very important indeed. Building a security culture within the organization, making the employees aware of how to be secure, Simple policies, clear desk policies, uh, uh, phishing, uh, how to identify the threat to the organizations. And the role has definitely changed over the years. Okay? They've got to look at profit, uh, efficiency of, of uh, the crime prevention that actually within the organization. And at the end of the day, this is very important indeed, because they got five elements to control, which is the people, the building, the systems, the procedures that follows, and of course the information and intelligence. Great. Once those are controlled, then you actually created the safe and secure environment that's actually required within any organization. Great. Yeah, so foundation stuff, really. 
Um, okay, Donna, what do you think? And uh, what, what's the what's the single aspect you think? Yeah, thank you. So I guess from a CISO perspective or cybersecurity specifically, um, we have an increased pressure on our security posture. Um, we're seeing a very dynamic, interconnected uh, technology surface. Um, threat sophistication. So I guess the role um, of security professionals here is, uh, is really focused on reducing complexity and managing capacity. Um, what I mean by that is to reduce, um, to really cut through my security program um, with all the vendor solutions that I have in, in place and, and uh, available and um, really streamlining processes, integrating people, processes and technology so that I can get a better visibility on my surface and, and make risk-informed decisions and reduce uh, response time. And then managing my capacity, looking at uh, automation, freeing up security teams uh, from repetitive work by using technology and so my teams and I, as a leader, can focus on innovation, strategizing, um, fostering relationships with key stakeholders, etc. So okay, thanks, Don. Okay, Paul, what do you think? Speaking from your Iraq experience. What yeah, sure. So, if we look back to 2014, the global oil crisis, <coughs> and a lot of companies at that time were looking for ways to restructure their organizations. And health and safety and security was one of those areas that was explored for potential cost savings. So, essentially, uh, sorry, lost the thought process there, yeah. So, cost implications aside, one of the key drivers was that safety incidents really can have a negative impact on uh, the security function and vice versa. Now, I work in the oil and gas industry where there's a high risk of safety incidents. And additionally, I work in Iraq, so it's a high threat environment. So, collaboration between the safety and security departments really becomes key when looking to tackle some of those shared risks. I think companies that are working in uh, an environment where there is a high risk of safety incidents have really embraced this dual function concept. And especially on the project level where we have environmental health, safety and security managers working together to implement, integrate their management systems to cater for not just safety but also security risks. So the, prof the security professional's role is it's quite dynamic and always expanded into different areas. I think this is one example. And you know, not only does it create more employment opportunities, but it also creates diverse uh, career pathways for those practitioners that are comfortable to work in a dual role setting. Okay. Now, Khaled, you're, you're, uh, you head uh, regulation. So as a regulator, how do you see the role of the security professional changing? Well, it changed actually from the old school type to write some uh, small or short information in a logbook to use uh, apps and devices to share more information, pictures with the authority. So the mentality has changed a lot. Actually. Good. Excellent. Well, moving on from there then, which Carla has, has, has touched on, thinking about the human resource end, end of it. Of course, and as, yeah, as Carla brought in, the interface between the, uh, the technical and uh, the human grows ever greater. So what do you think about the hiring implications of the changes that, that Khaled has just highlighted, Adol? It's quite similar to what uh, is actually uh, in the past. The security was uh, related to the military or the police, mainly, and, 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 and the, the night guard. The same thing will apply on the technical side. Uh, for example, if you take, uh, uh, for example, the professional security manager or the security professional, he looks after the assets of the company, mainly the equipment and, 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 uh, and the, uh, 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 the guarding the, the assets of the organization. On the other hand, the cyber security uh, professional looks after the IT infrastructure which is looking at the data and the protection of the data. There was an issue in the past, which is CIRA has managed to, to resolve. There was, um, 
when the IP system came into place, analog system being phased out, and the IP system came into place, they used the servers of the organization in order to uh, uh, run the security system within the organizations. So they become the issue, who's responsible for the security system? Is it the IT manager or the security manager? Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the end of the day, the compromise have actually been reached, okay, is that they separated them. Every security system now, Zira has actually made it mandatory, it's got to have its own servers, okay, because IT managers are very protective about their hard drives and the, and the, uh, the memory and the capacity of their hard drives. And security, uh, particularly images, it's graphics, it takes a lot of space. So what they used to do in the past, whenever they need space, they cut cameras out of the system. Okay, so that's the reason it's resolved. And at this point, I would like to say, and anybody here can actually check, and I did my research on, on the, the regulations here in Dubai. If you look at it, it's a very comprehensive regulation. There's nothing like it in the world, because it encompasses the guarding, electronic side, manpower, the whole lot. It's a comprehensive regulations out there. Okay. So what is happening is now looking after the, the equipment, fine, uh, cybersecurity professional looking after the IT infrastructure is fine. But don't forget the really the weakest link in any security system is the human factor. And that's really got to be sorted out. So a security professional has got to have uh, 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 information risk management, okay? Qualification in, in, in information risk management, which is very important indeed to cover that weakest link from right. the employees themselves. It could be malicious. Most of the time, it's errors. Right. Okay. Great. Great. So, Donna. What do you what do you think? Uh, what are the hiring implications of the changes that we've that we've been talking yeah. about? Just want to add on what Adel just said. Um, I said here last year we were discussing about successful uh, security teams uh, and that diversity of skill set that is certainly required. Now, looking at uh, the ever evolving technology, we definitely need to adjust our security program and hire. Um, specialized technology skill sets into our teams, there's no doubt about that. Now, uh, we, we always hear that there's a shortage in the market in terms of cyber security uh, talent. Um, and so what I read recently is quite an interesting development in the hiring space that there is a trend to go towards skill-based hiring so um, I just read last week in the US, they have an official initiative actually directed from the White House level to fill the gap of half a million cybersecurity roles that are unfilled uh, across the country. And there, there is a set of companies committing to A, remove rigid um, requirements, for example, the four-year master degree, mm. yeah, and going into more skill-based hiring, meaning that they will engage young talent, giving them paid apprenticeships, um, and uh, especially on-the-job training. So there is an adaption here in the hiring, and, and you can see the, how important resilience is, um, again, also in, in this space of talent, which is very important. Right. Paul? Yeah, and no, it's interesting that we all on this, seem to be on this theme of cyber, because one of the most significant threats facing organizations today is the ad advances in technology and particularly the fast emerging AI industry where cyber criminals are becoming ever more creative at finding ways to extract data from organizations. So it's not surprising when we type in a search for security professional online that we're faced with 10 cyber roles for every one traditional role. And you know that's a clear sign that there is a high demand for cyber professionals in our industry. And further, I read a study from the uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, they studied millions of online job postings between 2012 and 2022. And in that decade, what they discovered was that the demand for cyber professionals outpaced the growth of all other occupations listed, which is incredible. Mm. So 
Um, but that's just to, goes to show that the shortage there. So this is great for cyber professionals, but what about traditional security practitioners? I think we need to find the right balance in terms of what knowledge and qualifications we need to obtain to at least have a baseline understanding of some of the main cyber risks so that we can, well, without verging over to, to being a cyber expert, I think if we can do that, we can uh, become a, a good value proposition for the organisations that we're working with. Khalid, has, has CIRA changed the way that it, it that is recruiting its, its, the people into the organisation? Yes, actually, uh, Dubai government are uh, attracting cyber intelligence to come to Dubai. And CIRA are encouraging the security professionals to improve themselves on this uh, uh, side of cyber security by enrolling in training courses and getting involved more in the cyber to uh, catch up with all the improvement in the world. And is, and is that, that the, the part of that, that cyber growth, would you say it's the largest growth area within cyber, with, sorry, within CIRA? Uh, it's still actually in a balance between the both sides, cyber okay. and the other right. sides. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, just, uh, we've got uh, three minutes left, so about, about a, a minute each, I think. Um, at the end of the day, nearly all of us are, are commercially uh, orientated. So, within our sector, where do you see the role of professionals and their efficiencies changing within the context of the most significant threats to business survival uh, within the security sector? Adol. Well, uh, there was always the, the old debate between academia and practitioners when they, you know, there was a debate saying that whether security is a profession or is it a job? Okay. At the end of the day, security today is a social science. It's, it's now being taught in colleges and universities uh, mm -hmm. for qualifications. Yeah. It's definitely, it needs uh, uh, a broad-based knowledge for the security professional, particularly in information risk management, uh, business continuity management, crisis management, and there is a lot of qualifications out there for security in order to acquire, because otherwise, uh, to predict uh, an undesirable event happening to the organization, it's normally organizations are reluctant to put resources towards it. Yes, of course. Okay? Yeah. And uh, they don't do that till a disaster happens. Mm. And then it becomes a priority. Mm. Then the job of the security professional will become like a salvage operation mm. rather than the proactive approach, which is supposed to be adopted by organizations yeah. in, in the first place. Yeah, I agree. So qualification is out there, and really the broad knowledge base must be established mm. within the profession. And there is a clear, uh, clear career path for security professionals, all the way from the garden level to a master's degree or a professorship in security. It's now available. Great. So definitely security is a profession. It's Great. not a job. Great. Donna, where do you see the most, the, in about 45 seconds, where do you see the biggest <laughs> threat to, uh, to business? Okay. Yeah. Um, the threats are out there, very sophisticated. Uh, we have to stay agile, resilient. We have to stay on the pulse of uh, development, uh, foster collaboration with uh, academia, um, stakeholders, uh, authorities, think tanks, etc. Find that time also to strategize. Again, if we automate most of the repetitive work, we have more time to dedicate to this. Uh, finding innovations in our area of business. And ultimately, what we got to focus on is um, the ultimate goal of our work is to reduce the probability of material impact caused by a security event. Paul, largest commercial threat in the oil sector. Yeah, well, I think leveraging AI is great, but one of the biggest risks to operating in a rapidly advancing technological environment is the fact that the regulations are lagging behind. So the, there is a danger that some integrated security solutions could become heavily regulated and no longer cost effective or potentially there could be privacy concerns rendering a certain technology obsolete. So I think, you know, uh, 2024 is the year of AI regulation. Mm. The EU, uh, European Parliament have just passed the e, uh, EU AI Act, which will enact a lot of scrutiny upon some of these models. Great, brilliant. Khaled, in, in, in just one sentence, what do you think the largest um, business threat is to security companies? Uh, 
if they don't improve their skills on a daily basis, tomorrow they will feel that they are living on the 70s. Right. They, have, right. Yeah. they, have, they have to improve that skills and that yeah. part on a daily basis. Really, because of what you just said, because of the AI and advances in technology. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, well thank you very much, panel. We are, we are out of time, so um, I'd just like to ask you to show your appreciation to the panel, and thank you for that. Yeah.